pantless brothers are not my problem. On Saturday, Mom parks our car in front of the sprawling modern house with tall windows and a long wooden ramp leading to the front door. I'm not sure I can do this. I glance the rearview mirror and see Mom's eyes looking at me. Save a piece of cake? David flickers his fingers beside me in the car. At four o'clock, I catch his hand and hold it so he'll play, pay attention. Here are your rules. I pass him a sheet of paper. David reads aloud. Chew with your mouth closed. Don't open or close doors at other people's houses. Don't look in the refrigerator or turn on their TV. Use a fork for cake, not your fingers. Catherine, I'll watch him, Mom says. Don't worry. Getting out of the car, I'm tempted to yell. Oh, yeah? Like you watched him at Melissa's? But I have bigger worries. Walking to the ramp, I clutch the bag of fancy jelly beans, the birthday card I painted with watercolors of guinea pigs eating cake, pig out on your birthday, and the guitar wrapped in two plastic white trash bags, a huge red bow tied around the neck. It was the best wrapping I could come up with for something so big. My pulse beats with my footsteps on the ramp, and as I get closer to Jason's front door, I hear a thumping bass line and muted laughter. I stab the doorbell. Part of me wants to drop the guitar on the welcome mat and jump into the shrubs, but before I can move, the door opens. I look up at a teenage boy with a familiar wavy reddish brown hair. Hi, he says. I'm Matt, Jason's brother. I'm Catherine. Oh, you're Catherine, he grins, raising one eyebrow. You've made Jason some cool cards. I blush. Of course, everyone who talks to Jason sees my cards. Why didn't I ever think of that? Come in. I'll tell Jason you're here. The living room is crowded with people. Some adults and kids sit in the chairs spread around the room, talking and laughing. Others stand at the table drinking coffee and soda. On the couch, there's a family with two little kids. The mother smiles at me, and I smile back. But I don't see Jason anywhere. I hold the guitar at my side so it's less noticeable. Catherine, Mrs. Morehouse comes towards me. Welcome. There's pizza in the kitchen. Grab a plate and make yourself at home. Matt, we could use a few more chairs. Would you get the ones off the back porch? She's wearing a skirt and heels, and I kick myself for not putting on lip gloss or wearing some something nicer than jeans, jean shorts and a t-shirt. When she steps close, I say, Did you know Jason invited my brother to come for a piece of cake? Yes, I'll put a big piece aside for David. Glancing at the people talking and laughing loudly, and all those doorknobs David will want to turn, I worry coming was a mistake. I add the card and jelly beans to the presents piled on the table and sit next to an older woman sliding the guitar under my chair. I should have brought Jason a music CD. I swallow, imagining him opening a beat-up guitar in front of all of these people. Hello, the woman says, her hand smoothing the lap of her cotton dress. Isn't this a lovely party? Yes, I say. Do you know where... Jason, Mrs. Morehouse calls. There you are. Catherine's here. In the doorway to the kitchen, Jason turns his head until he sees me. I walk over, wishing he'd smile or frown or anything that'd tell me if he's still mad at me. But Jason's mouth stays a flat line. Happy birthday, I say. I left something on the present table for you, but I have another present, too. Thank you. I tap, secret. Jason moves his hand away so I can turn the pages of his communication book. I tap, I want open present. I reach into my shorts pocket and pull out together. On the card, I drew myself sitting on the red bench and Jason beside me in his wheelchair. I'm sorry. Jason smiles. Me too. Come with me. He gestures to the hallway, and I slide the guitar out from under the chair. Following him, I hold the guitar behind my back, counting four doors for David to open before Jason goes through a doorway. A shiver passes between my shoulder blades. Though there's a house full of people down the hall, it feels sneaky and wrong to step into a boy's bedroom. On the wall, over Jason's bed, between two baseball posters, is my drawing of Chrissy's house. And in front of the window is an electric p piano. Is that your piano, I ask? He nods and turns the page in his communication book. I play bad, but I like it. I'd love to hear you play. I bring the guitar out from behind my back. Sorry about the wrapping, but I couldn't really disguise it. I untie the bow, and he pulls away the trash bag wrapping. Nobody will mistake the guitar for new, but I cleaned it until it shone. Mom took it to the music store, and they put new strings in, on and tuned it, I say. that part That's part of parts a present from David, but the guitar is for me. He smiles wide. Thank you, Catherine. Perfect guitar. You're welcome. I lay it across his wheelchair, and he traces his fingers across the strings. It sounds rich and mysterious, lingering in the air even after his hand moves away. Dazzling, he gestures for me to put his guitar on his bed. I take the guitar from him and see it as his pill on his pillow. 
Behind me, I hear Jason cross the room to the window. Music startles me. I spin to see Jason's shoulders bowed forward, his hands reaching over his wheelchair, tray to the keyboard. I walk over to look closer at his fingers, bent nearly double. His fingers touch the keys, much like he touches his cards one at a time. It's a simple song, spare and haunting. That's beautiful. My own music. Jason, a voice calls. I turn. His mother stands in the doorway, smiling. Grandpa needs to leave soon, so let's do your cake now. Jason backs up and turns for the hallway. I sweep a last look at, across the piano, the guitar left on his pillow, the baseball posters, and my drawing of Chrissy's house. Walking down the hallway, I hear people singing Happy Birthday, but I hum Jason's song under their singing. I want to remember it. The, ch the cake is chocolate, my favorite. But I move the cake bits around on my plate, squeezing them flat with my fork. Beside me on the couch, Jason's elderly neighbor is going on about his problem with chipmunks in his cellar. They're cute until they chew through your wires, he says. Mrs. Morehouse answers the doorbell. Thank you for v inviting us, I hear Mom's voice. David's been looking forward to this all afternoon. Now I don't think about... I don't think about cute, the man next to me says. I think that's the electrician's bill. Before I can greet Mom and David... David rushes past me. Cake? I keep David in my line of sight as he sits in the kitchen table, especially as Mrs. Morehouse shows Mom something out the window. How lovely, Mom says. Are they hard to grow? My husband is the gardener in our family. I stand up. Nice to meet you, I say to the chipmunk man as I watch David slide his hand towards the platter of leftover cake. And, um, good luck. Darn little pests. He turns to the woman on his other side. If you've got one, you've got a whole bunch. I hurry to the kitchen and drop my plate of cake into front of David. Use a fork, I whisper, pressing mine into his hand, not your fingers. Around me, a woman rinses uh, cups in the sink, and Matt scrapes crumbs from his plate into the trash. A teenage girl with braids brings in a baby, his mouth ringed with brown frosting. Can I have some extra napkins, she asks. Jason comes up beside me. Sorry, neighbor, talk, all the time. No problem. My old neighbor, Mrs. Bowman, used to talk a lot, too. <clears throat> Sorry, Catherine, new neighbor, friend, can't come. My birthday party. I'm sure Christy would, ha would have had fun. I throw David a strict look as he picks up a bit of cake off his plate with his fingers. But the community center dances tonight, and she, <clears throat> and she had to help decorate. Do you want to come to the dance? <clears throat> no, she's going with Ryan. I'm sure he doesn't want me hanging around with them any more than I want to be with him. David licks frosting off the side of his hand. I pass him a napkin, but he wipes his mouth with it instead. I mean, do you want to come dance me? I look for, up from Jason's book. He's watching my face, his eyes serious. I can't. Why? I stare at the word card in its, with its big question mark. Are you embarrassed about me? Of course not. I hear Jason pound his cards, but I can't look. I brush crumbs off David's shirt into my cupped hand. I'm a, just a horrible dancer. Terrible, in fact. I'm so bad. I even have a rule against it. No dancing unless I'm alone in my room or it's pitch black dark. Jason makes a loud, rumbling sound. Rule. Stupid excuse. My breath catches. Everyone in the kitchen has stopped to look at us except David, who pushes back his chair. My rules aren't stupid, I say quietly. Or excuses. Yes, excuse. I just like music, he scowls. And you. Ramming the joystick forward, Jason whirls out of the kitchen, past David, opening the cupboard door. More cake? David asks as I pry his fingers off the door handle. We're all done. Holding his arm, I pull him behind me. Excuse me, I say, passing people. Sorry, gotta go. Catherine, Mom asks, is something wrong? I push open the door. Tears spill down my cheeks as I run with David down the ramp. The party is over.